In April of 2022, I uploaded a video that discussed the ethical and practical arguments around cheating in Man vs. Machine. In it, I discussed the feud between PizzaBot, the most notorious cheating organization at the time, and Basil, a vigilante pyro intent on vanquishing them. Basil, in the eyes of many, embodied the spirit of a chaotic good player, someone fighting the good fight in his own unorthodox way. However, the prologue to this drama contained a recollection of my prior experiences with Basil, giving a brief glimpse into how he acts when the cameras are off. I thought nothing of it at the time. It was a pretty milquetoast rehashing of old events that I figured would add flavor to the story being told. Little did I expect that this 1 minute, 13 second lore dump would be the beginning of the most insane, schizophrenic meltdown I have ever witnessed in all of TF2. And today, we tell the story of what happened and how we got here. Basil was very, very unhappy with how he was portrayed in the original video, claiming that I blatantly lied and mischaracterized his behavior in almost every instance where I mentioned his name. These public accusations were originally floated in the form of a Reddit post, which did end up getting some minor traction. But after a day or two, no one cared to give it a second look. This post was later deleted and instead transformed into a Google Doc which has retained a lot more staying power. That doesn't mean people take it seriously though. In fact, it's clear that the vast majority of people who read the document think it's a crock of shit. Every time Basil attempts to expand its reach, he just ends up getting memed on. That still hasn't stopped some people from referencing it as a serious critique of my conduct. I think you can guess who. Upset at the fact that he isn't getting the retribution he believes he deserves, Basil has gone a bit mental. He's made 22 and counting different alt accounts on Twitter that do nothing but spam his document under every post I make. He's repeatedly posted it on Reddit despite being flooded with downvotes every time. And most unhinged of all, he created a dedicated Twitter with a clearly provocative name, searched every single person who has ever replied to one of my tweets, and sent them this document outright. If you thought this was automated, I wouldn't blame you. But if you check the times between replies, you'll notice that there are distinct, minute-long intervals between each of them. Basil is doing all of this manually. Now, unlike many MVM controversies I've begrudgingly fallen into, I debated on whether or not I should make this video for a very long time. It's clear that Basil really wants my attention, and by addressing his claims, I am inadvertently handing him that W. But I figured that as long as the good outcomes outweigh the bad, we may as well take down this herb and start mincing. So in this video, I'm gonna do three things. 1. Publicly humiliate Basil for your amusement. Because trust me, there's no shortage of content to work with. 2. Address every claim found in the document and chop through them like a chainsaw monkey on speed. And 3. Take the money that this video generates and do some S-tier shit with it, which I'll announce at the end. So, this video was sponsored by War Thunder, a military-like PvP shooter with plenty of high-tech machinery to duke it out with. Looking to fight on land? Grab yourself a tank. Prefer the air? That's what planes are for. Want a badass game of Battleship? They got that covered too. With over 2,000 different tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships to mess around with, War Thunder's got variety for days, with each vehicle showcasing their individual components in very fine detail. Thanks to the game's substantial amount of customization options, you can fine-tune each vehicle to your own personal taste, something I'm quite a fan of. There's nothing stopping you from jumping into War Thunder, as the game is completely free to play, available on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. And if you use my link in the description below, you'll receive a large bonus pack containing premium account status, multiple premium vehicles, a 3D decorator for those vehicles, and much more. Alright, so before we pummel Basil's document into the dirt, I figured it'd be worthwhile to give a timeline of events. We'll be quick about this, I promise. Around summer of 2021, yes, really, we're going that far back, I ran into Basil for the first time in-game. 
This was the encounter laid out in part 1. He airblasted the bomb carrier to the hatch while being entirely unresponsive, despite constant prodding to open up. This was the first time I had ever been griefed in my long history of playing Man vs. Machine, so I remembered the event quite well. Later on in 2021, I would run into Basil a second time where he pulled the exact same stunt as before. He griefed our game, didn't say a word about it, and demoralized our lobby to the point of a mass rage quit. Now, unlike the first encounter, I never mentioned this one in the original cheating video. I had it in the rough draft of the script somewhere, but it hit all the same narrative beats as the first encounter, so I elected to cut it out for pacing reasons. But yes, I actually had a second encounter with Basil that predated the PizzaBot showdown. That was the third encounter with Basil, which happened on February 17th, 2022. I don't think there's much to explain here, it's all covered in the original video, which, for context was uploaded on April 29th, 2022. A couple days went by, and that's when Basil would create his original write-up on Reddit, while also sparking a flame war with me in the comments below. A few weeks later, he'd create a fake alt account on Discord, reference himself in the third person, and start white knighting on his behalf. The profile is updated to look authentic nowadays, but just for proof, here's Basil's own admittance that he was using an alias to milk me for more information. In August of 2022, that's when he'd delete the Reddit post and create the document instead. At this point, things went quiet for a whole year, and I assumed that Basil had worn himself out. That was, until August 2nd of 2023, where I was playing a game of Disintegration, and on Wave 5, two Pyro players joined my gang. The first was Basil, if you couldn't have guessed, alongside Schwabel, a modern-day Tacobot member. Basil in particular didn't help the team at all. He literally finished the mission with zero damage having been done. The whole time, he was just flying around with a jetpack, goading me to address him on Twitter, to which I replied something along the lines of, oh I will, as I planned on posting this screenshot later on in the night. From here onwards, that's where Basil's schizo spree would breathe new life. The aforementioned 22 Twitter accounts, mass replying to all of my followers, and multiple downvoted Reddit posts would emerge shortly after. He's been off duty for the past month or so, but there's no doubt he'll pop up again. I'll give him props for committing to the bit, but Christ, you'd think after two years he'd give it a break. I bring all these events up because Basil can't help himself from shoving his foot in his mouth every time. As the old saying goes, if you give someone enough rope, they'll hang themselves. And an early 20s YouTuber with a silly hat putting it on film always ends well. So we're gonna go over each point in detail, talking about what's correct, what's misinterpreted, and what are knowingly fabricated lies on Basil's behalf. Let's start with the most pressing and most talked about accusation in his document, that I got a body double to impersonate him for a sizable portion of the footage used. Now, right off the bat, let me confirm that this accusation is 100% true. And not only is it true for my original cheating video, but it's true for much of my other content as well. Confused? Well, let me explain. When getting footage for a video, it isn't a difficult process when you're working off of an already completed script. You can jot down notes for all the footage you need and hunt them down at your own leisure. Pretty self-explanatory, I think you all know the gist. However, what happens when you're given an on-the-fly, impromptu confrontation with a batshit insane high tour that might make for a compelling story later on down the road? you don't get that same luxury. The video isn't written. It's not even a concept yet. So the footage being recorded isn't tangential to the script, the future script is now tangential on the footage being recorded. There's no pre-established checklist to work off of and get every shot you need. You have to spontaneously become a cameraman for a movie that doesn't exist yet. You don't know what footage you'll need, you don't know how much footage you'll need, and you don't even know when or how you'll need to use it. But when the time comes to put those MP4s to use, you better hope that director's vision isn't unusual. Most of the time, it isn't an issue at all. And I I want to stress that the vast, vast, vast majority of clips being shown of any toxic encounter are real-time showcases of the events that occurred. But, not always. 
Let's use our gentleman encounter from part 2 as a template to illustrate what I mean. The filler moments of gentleman standing still while I look at his character model are not real time. They're recorded in post with a body double, though many of you probably guessed that already. Similarly, Cold Town has this problem of being beige, and white text on a beige background, especially when your character's moving and your teammates are spamming voice comms, it's just a jumbled, unpresentable mess. So a lot of these lingering text shots were recreated with the dark brown background inside of the spawn room so I could better illustrate to my viewers what each party was saying. I didn't edit the conversation, I didn't fabricate any new story beats, I just took the events that already happened and made them more visually cohesive. I think most people will agree that cases like these are completely understandable and don't require much of an elaborate defense. But as for the actual gameplay, there was only one clip on the final wave that I recreated, where I walk out of spawn and glare at gentlemen using the stock flamethrower. I didn't have the clip of the oh shit moment when it actually happened, so I had to improvise. Additionally, I also recorded some gameplay of waves 5 and 6 with the body double, but I think that makes sense. Gentlemen didn't grief our game until wave 7, so there was no reason to be recording up to that point. The reason I'm laying all of this out is because I want to make it abundantly clear what my philosophy is on using imitated recordings. If I have real-time footage that is of reasonable quality and encapsulates the point I'm trying to make, I will use it every time without fail. The problem is, what if I don't have that footage? What if I do have that footage, but in very low quantity? What if I do have enough, but the quality is god-awful? I could cut out a key part of the story, but that makes the video worse. I could reuse the same clips over and over, but that makes the video worse. I could just put up a black screen and let the narration run, but again, that makes the video worse. At the time of writing, it's very much in vogue to shit on content creators for engaging in dubious practices during a video creation process. Deservedly so, might I add. But that's exactly why I'm trying to be as explicit as possible. I want no room for ambiguity. On the 1 or 2% of occasions where it's actually necessary, I will use a body double for gameplay clips and recreate them as authentically as I can if the choice is between that or no footage at all. Even in this very video you're watching right now, this basal footage is reenacted. So is this, so is this. Does literally anyone care? Probably not. Unless I deliberately use these opportunities to mischaracterize the events that took place, I don't believe there's any foul play here. But Basil really disagrees with that. So, just to give a brief rundown of what's what here, the Pizza Bot encounter is all real-time footage, but the 73-second retelling of events is all recreated. Ditto with a couple of clips interspersed at the end. Now, the reason for doing this is quite obvious. The encounter I was describing happened in the summer of 2021, before this channel was even created. It goes without saying that any real-time footage of this encounter does not exist. From there, Basil then made it his mission to let everyone know that this footage was an imposter. And that was cool with me. I didn't care if people learned that the footage was reenacted. I barely tried to hide it. Players on your friends list will usually be differentiated by showing their profile pictures next to their nameplates. I knew this going in. You can clearly see that in many clips, I'm trying to keep my crosshair on Basil as much as possible. There are literally prolonged segments that do nothing but linger on his character. Obviously not everyone would pick up on this being a user from my friends list, but I knew a good chunk of my audience would. A number large enough that it would be inevitable people would ask me about it. And again, I had no problems with that. I admitted it several times within literally 24 hours of the video's launch. All of my chat logs are public. I haven't deleted anything. Any of you can go look through all of them right now. If all Basil wanted to do was address this clear fact of the matter, I'd have no problems with him. But that's not what happened. Basil went on to wax poetic about how my imitated footage is a defamatory caricature of his actions. 
claiming that because none of the lobbies had a cheater within their ranks, it was misrepresentative of how he acts in-game. Inherent to that accusation is the presumption that he only griefs cheaters. Otherwise, the footage wouldn't be inaccurate. Now, this is actually quite a scathing accusation. That I portrayed a guy who would only go after cheaters as someone who would go after non-cheaters as well. Two wildly differing situations with varying levels of severity. There's just one tiny, itty bitty little problem with this accusation. Basil doesn't only go after cheaters. Basil has admitted on several occasions to also griefing people who support cheating in MVM, which, to anyone unfamiliar with the game mode, is a massive portion of the player base. Now, fair enough. If there's a cheater plowing through the mission and the four surrounding teammates refuse to kick him, it's fair game to classify them all as supporters and griefing the game becomes more justifiable. But Basil doesn't have such a restriction. If he joins into a random MVM lobby that has one, I repeat, one cheater supporter present. He will whip out the leaf blower and prevent the game from moving forward. As I've repeatedly brought up, only 50% of MVM players have a hardline anti-cheating stance. The rest are either pro-cheating or ambivalent towards it. That means the likelihood you queue into a random lobby and have every player be in lockstep with your position is literally 3%. Under Basil's philosophy of it being justifiable to grief lobbies that contain even one player who's cool with cheating, an average of 97% of MVM lobbies have the potential to be griefed. And what does Basil think about this? He doesn't care. Quote, The cheater supporter that is in the lobby that I am griefing is at fault, not me. Not only do they obviously support cheaters, but they wholeheartedly know why I'm griefing. It is their responsibility to man up and tell the team that they're a supporter or leave the game. Yeah, all 50% of them. First off, you don't know that. You don't know at all whether or not your target is privy to the information behind your griefing. Especially since Basil also admitted to rarely ever using chat. So his rationale would never be vocalized. A claim I can testify firsthand is correct. A lot of people have gotten blacklisted on Tacobot and didn't find out until months or sometimes years later. Not everyone tagged with an offense is hyper aware to how individual members of a niche, ragtag team of griefers will perceive them. Definitive statements like this are just clearly wrong. Second of all, what an absolutely appalling hand-waving of all accountability. In Basil's mind, he bears no fault, no responsibility for the four other players getting trampled at his peril. Again, we're not talking about a cheater or a group of cheater supporters. We're talking about individual MVM players dumped into random games with one guy who believes in one of the most banal stances imaginable. I'm here for loot, give it to me faster. One guy thinking that is enough justification for him to sink the mission for everybody. Without getting too meta about this shit, this is why people aren't fans of vigilanteism. Because these are the vigilantes. People intent on imposing their rule no matter the consequences with zero regard for who gets hurt in the process. You don't get to spend years holding games hostage with a 4 to 1 ratio of good guys to bad and then confidently position yourself on top of a moral high ground, arguing none of the bad outcomes are your responsibility. Basil states, and I quote, Cheater supporters are just as much destroying MVM as cheaters. How little self-awareness do you have to have to not recognize the sheer irony of that statement? People like Basil or Vruyi or Gentleman, they've done far more harm to Man vs. Machine than Pizzabot ever could. Any method targeting one opponent at the cost of ruining Man vs. Machine for four non-offending players is a solution that bears no no chance of not being worse than the problem. But they don't care, because this was never about upholding the integrity of the game mode, no matter how much they delude themselves into believing that. Their star value is tribalism. That's their MO. To them, the four other surrounding teammates aren't viewed as players. They're collateral, 
pawns in a never-ending game of Air Blast Bloodsports. So when Basil accuses me of misrepresenting him because I didn't show him griefing cheaters, my response to that is, yeah because you don't only grief cheaters. In fact, he griefs a lot more people than he lets on. As I was queuing into games to get b-roll for this very video, I stumbled into a coal town lobby in progress that was getting sabotaged by another pyro griefer. His reason was because our sniper was using the Machina. I'm not kidding. They don't use Machina, and then the uh, engineer said, oh, let him play however he wants. And, um, you know, I decided to grieve. Now, if you look at my character portrait, you'll notice I'm not using the banana loadout. I'm rocking an alias, and my profile is private. No one on the team is aware of who I am. And in the mother of all coincidences, literally on my first game I jumped into for recording's sake, one of our teammates, completely unprompted, relayed a past experience that they had with Basil. He's mad that I was not 20 plus tours. According to this player's testimony, Basil griefed the lobby just because he was a low tour. Now, the sentiment of X bad thing happened to me because I'm a low tour is one that is as frequently debunked as it is touted. It's very rare for someone to get kicked or griefed just because of a low number. Usually there's some kind of gameplay or behavioral rationale behind it. So, I attempted to play devil's advocate on Basil's behalf asking the player if he suspected there may have been a cheater supporter in the game. The player then answers the question by stating that Basil explicitly told him his reasonings in chat for why he was griefing. Like, he literally typed in chat, he's like, oh no, it's because you're well, too low level to be playing with me. It's like, what? why didn't you just say that? I probably would have left. That doesn't sound like someone who only griefs for cheater-related crimes, now does it? For the record, I later revealed to him who I was, but that was after he gave me his testimony, so it's not like he blatantly hyperbolized facts to get in my good graces. Just wanted to make that clear. Now, even though I am covering this, I recommend you take this accusation with a grain of salt. There are several factors that could be obstructing the truth of what happened. For one thing, Basil doesn't talk. By his own admittance, and based on my own negative experiences with him, it's seemingly very rare for Basil to ever vocalize whatever his bogus rationale of the week is. So hearing a testimony where Basil explicitly gave his reasons as to why he was griefing, that seems a bit out of character. Additionally, it's possible that this player misinterpreted what Basil meant by that statement, and he's not giving a direct quote. Hell, for all we know, this might not even be the same Basil as the one we're talking about today. Until I see multiple people corroborate this story, I don't think we should take it at face value. I don't believe this evidence on its own is substantive enough to prove that Basil won't mess with people unrelated to cheating. But you know what is? A fucking video. This is footage of a pyro player by the name of Kina locking a big rock mission on the last wave. Now, fair enough, this isn't Basil technically griefing himself, but the only reason Kina has the ability to stall the round indefinitely is because he has infinite ammo a la the dispenser. And guess who decided to build it there? To me, these actions are one and the same. This kind of permanent game locking literally could not be done without Basil's help. Kina can lock the boss temporarily without an NG, but eventually the pyro will have to retreat for ammo. He can push the giant to the hatch, but there are measures you can take to counter that. Basil was the cardinal factor in allowing this group to be ruined, and he took those reins without a care in the world. Were there any cheaters? No. Were there any cheater supporters? No. They held up the game for ransom because the team refused to kick the medic player. Kina straight up says, F1 or this won't stop and his reasoning for locking the game was because the medic was apparently toxic and annoying on a prior mission. It's completely okay to have a low opinion of some random player. That's all well and good, but you don't respond to that by flushing three unrelated third parties down the shitter with him. Toxic and annoying. Again, the irony is palpable. So let's go over everything one last time, shall we? Basil has proven he's willing to grief a lobby if A. There is a cheater on the team. B. There is a cheater supporter on the team. 97% chance, by the way. C. There is a player he doesn't like on the team. 
and D, allegedly, there is a player not deemed appropriate enough skill level. Basil claims that I'm a bold-faced liar because my reenacted footage doesn't showcase him griefing for reason A. However, the footage I showed is a point-for-point -point representation of what an onlooker would see had he been griefing for reasons B, C, or D. And considering that there were no cheaters during my first two encounters I had with him, by process of elimination, he had to have been griefing my first two lobbies for either reason B, reason C, or reason D. Ergo, the reenactments I made for those encounters were not misrepresentative, nor were they defamatory. I didn't make Basil look bad. He did that to himself. For transparency's sake, I'm willing to admit that I'm not perfect here either. I, very stupidly might I add, thought the best way to prove that Basil griefs innocent players would be to encourage someone to grief innocent players. Yeah, uh, real talk, that was definitely a dick move on my end, and if you want to call me an asshole for doing that, Modern Wheezy definitely agrees. This was actually what I was referencing near the end of part two, by the way. And just for full accountability, I've encouraged this before. I was down in the gutter with the rest of them. A lot of people didn't catch that, so I figured I'd address it here. I can assure you, no low tours have been harmed in the making of this video, or any video since that time period. Though, fun fact, on Basil's expose Twitter account named When Will Wheezy Admit His Mistakes, in literally his pinned fucking tweet, he shows a chat log of me blatantly admitting to this mistake. So, uh, good one, Basil. That was by far the most pressing accusation in the document. But one look at that video runtime will tell you that we're not done here. Basil just couldn't help himself from grabbing the crack pipe and beelining for every deranged conspiracy he could possibly conjure up. I'm dead serious, some of this shit borders on genuine, clinical delusion. The more information Basil provides, the less credible he becomes. It's why all of his efforts to make the document more widespread have failed miserably in garnering him support. And I am more than happy to be the final nail in that coffin. Let's go back to Basil's original Reddit post, the one that predates the creation of the doc by a couple of months. As mentioned earlier, this Reddit post is deleted but we can use the Wayback Machine to figure out exactly what was said. Much of it is a precursor to the accusations levied in the document today. Some stuff added, some stuff removed, but by and large, it's mostly the same. However, within this Reddit post, there are a couple of seemingly insignificant points that would later reveal something odd. In the cheating video where I give the rundown on Basil's past, I say the line, despite my best efforts to talk him down, which was completely true. The encounters I had with Basil were the only times I'd ever been griefed prior to becoming a content creator. I remembered very vividly wanting to get to the bottom of why he was doing this, and I also remembered the ensuing frustration from when he kept his mouth shut the entire time. Basil, in the Reddit post, refutes this accusation by saying, quote, Wheezy never never tried to talk me down, not only since that wasn't actually me griefing, but he didn't even put in the effort to add me and talk about the topic in his YouTube video with me directly. Now, if you're playing at home, you'll notice the obvious problem here. The original claim was that I tried to talk Basil down during our first encounter, yet as a refutation, Basil provides testimonies pertaining solely to the third encounter, the pizza bot one shown off in the video. There is no way Basil could miss this had he been paying attention. The segments are distinctly differentiated in the video. Basil's drama with PizzaBot isn't even mentioned until 55 seconds after I make that statement. So why would the claim that I attempted to talk him down be referencing a mission that the audience doesn't even know happened yet? The answer is, it wouldn't. And we'll come back to this in a bit. Another oddity I found within the original Reddit post was that Basil speculates on my reason for creating the footage. Quote, All of that just because of a person vendetta against me. Perhaps because I griefed your games full of cheaters back in February. Before I put the pieces together, this accusation didn't make any sense to me. Why would he feel the need to speculate on my motivation for showing him off in the video? The motivation is obvious. You griefed my lobby, eat a bag of dicks. In Basil's mind, the explanation I gave in the video about having prior dealings with him had to have been insufficient. Because if he believed I was telling the truth and that my summary of events played Played out as I said they did, there would be no reason to rebuke my narrative with one of his own. 
Additionally, why would Basil debunk my claims of trying to talk him down in the first encounter using context exclusively relating to the Pizzabot one? You can only really draw one conclusion from this. In Basil's mind, this is the only time he ever actually griefed me, and everything else in my video is a retrofitted lie motivated by that event. Instead of believing real events from a real story that really did happen, Basil assumed that the Pizzabot encounter was the catalyst for my disdain towards him, and that led me to fabricate a fake story with fake events that never actually happened, all in the name of casting him as my villain of the day to make him look bad. Now, at this point in time, Basil hadn't contaminated the well with 18 gallons of rat poison, so I just assumed that this was an honest misunderstanding. It was clear that Basil didn't remember the first two encounters he had with me, and that's completely fair. I wasn't a prominent content creator during either of those altercations. So, I reiterated my statements in as much detail as possible, including all of the necessary context he missed the first time around, and it seemed to work out pretty well. Upon reading my recollection of events in more detail, he then stated, quote, As you said, I do not remember griefing you these first two times. I'm just gonna believe you're telling the truth. Okay, cool. Basil is now well aware of the actual context pertaining to me attempting to talk him down, and his speculation about this being a retroactively fabricated hit job cannot logically follow should he believe my testimony of events. So, why are those claims still in the document? Like, let's get this straight. Basil completely misattributed the context to which my statements were being referred to. I give him the proper context. He acknowledges this proper context. But when it comes time to make the document, he still decides to run with those same debunked claims. I figured that this had to be an oversight, what with the tremendous amount of control c control v and I was willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. Until I realized he then went on to double down on his debunked narrative and add a completely new line that wasn't in the original Reddit post. Quote, The reason why he only has this one clip of the real Basil is because that is the only time Basil had griefed him. In that one game that was in February. That's why he had to use fake footage earlier. That's why I had to use fake footage? This is the only time you ever griefed me? Which one is it, Basil? He literally admitted he believes I was telling the truth about the two prior encounters that predated the Pizzabot debacle. But then, with no rhyme and no reason, he flips on a fucking dime and goes back to his original batshit insane conspiracy theory that I was lying about our history to make him look bad. I just have one question. Why would I do this? Like, let's look at this from Basil's point of view for a moment. If the only time I had ever been griefed by him was during the Pizzabot encounter, what grudge would I hold against him? I literally admit I had no issue with Basil griefing the Pizzabot members. I know we all laughed at Basil for what he did, but in actuality, I'm not going to condemn him for trying to waste the time of the cheaters. And then went on to affirm this statement in part two. Now, I myself stated that despite my long history of avoiding Basil at every turn, I did didn't object to what he was doing to the cheaters specifically. Funny, yes. Absurd, absolutely. Immoral, I don't think so. Conversely, when he was debating me on one of his sock puppet accounts, I, in patronizing fashion, made him a cute little Microsoft paint graph to showcase when griefing is justified and when it isn't. The pizza bot encounter fell under the middle category, which has a nice blue check right next to it. Why would I go through all this effort of making up a fake backstory with a fake timeline and a fake series of events to get back at someone who, by my own admission in the video, isn't doing anything wrong here. What rationalization could possibly exist that would have goaded me into doing such a thing? Well, let's ask Basil. I have a feeling Pizzabot members had this glorious idea, and you went through with it since they were so nice to you. That's only what I think, though. Who knows what they actually did with you? I... <laughs> I, uh, is this even worthy of a response? Pizzabot put me up to this. That's the story you're going with. It's very evident that Basil is getting really, really desperate. Like, you can't unironically believe this, right? I wouldn't be bringing this up if this was just an offhand speculation from a year ago, but Basil, to this day, openly rejects my summary of events. And he has to, because if he doesn't, every decision I made in framing his actions the way I did is perfectly justified.
justifiable, and his grand narrative of me being some vengeful TF tuber purposefully defaming innocent people for money and clout, it wouldn't hold any water. I really shouldn't feel the need to debunk this. It's pretty much self-evidently bullshit. But to really drive home just how fucking delusional you'd have to be to even consider this possibility, let's run through all the counter-arguments. 1. When detailing my encounters with Basil in response to his Reddit post, I explicitly point out how he never used in-game chat during his tirades. In a follow-up to this claim, Basil would validate my statement. So the question is obvious. How would I know beforehand that Basil doesn't communicate when he's in the midst of a griefing session had I not experienced it myself prior? The answer is, I wouldn't. 2. As mentioned in the video, I would leave every lobby I queued into if Basil ever ended up on my team. If Basil never fucked with me in the past, why would I ever feel the need to do that? 3. Lots of people went after PizzaBot. They literally had a 200 fucking page long manifesto outlining their beefs with individual users in great detail. Why would some random motherfucker named after an herb be at the top of that priority list? In the 218 pages containing hundreds of screenshots lambasting dozens of different high tour schizos, Basil shows up in exactly two comments. If PizzaBot were to ever give me a hit job, it wouldn't be on you. 4. What makes you think PizzaBot could persuade me in the first place? I can't believe I actually have to repeat this more than once, but PizzaBot and I were never friends. I reached out to them to record footage for my cheating video, played some missions with their members, and then once I had all that I needed, I cut all contact with them and never queued together again. I was even told behind the scenes that one of the co-owners of PizzaBot was actually one of the players in the cheating group that fucked with me in part 2. It's just hearsay. It's it's nothing conclusive, but it wouldn't surprise me. We're not friends. And five, what I would argue is the most undeniable piece of evidence I have, after the PizzaBot encounter with Basil had wrapped up, I messaged one of my friends who I thought was present during the second encounter with Basil about the events that had just unraveled. In hindsight, he was probably just at a Discord call and not in the game itself, but that's not the point. The point is, this is direct evidence of me referencing a past negative experience with Basil completely off the record. And Basil knows this happened, because I showed him this screenshot in the first response I made to his original Reddit post. It might have even been an integral component of him actually believing I wasn't making things up. Nothing I just mentioned is hidden or trapped inside my own head. These are all counter arguments that are based on public information that I was able to think up in literal minutes, and after relaying these arguments to Basil, alongside mountains upon mountains of evidence showcasing that I was in fact griefed by him on two separate occasions before the PizzaBot encounter, I genuinely thought he'd come to his senses and reevaluate his perspective. There was just no way you could keep believing this narrative after even a moment of introspection. I wrapped up one of my replies with the following. You unironically bought into the Wheezy is buddy buddy with PizzaBot argument, there's no saving you. To which Basil would boldly reply, yes. Yes I did. You might think that someone this ideologically driven, this willing to ignore the most obvious facts on the planet, has to be trolling. There's just no way this is an actual person trying to posit a legitimate criticism. But no, he's 100% real. And guess what? There's still much, much more. I know he's been chopped to fine ash at this point, but knocking down false accusations with evidence is much more cathartic than just writing someone off as a crank and moving on. So we're gonna rapid fire through the rest of the document and burn through whatever credibility Basil has left. Hard to go any lower than zero, but if anyone could do it, it'd be him. First up, Basil accuses me of calling him a Taco Bot member. This never happened. What I actually said is that Basil was an associate of TacoBot members. After all this drama occurred, Basil proceeded to share this screenshot among his TacoBot associates. I knew for a fact that Basil wasn't a member of TacoBot because one of the first things I do when gathering recon on a particular player is checking the TacoBot archives to see if they had any kind of prior affiliation. Basil's name was there, but not as a member. He was a blacklist recipient. He claims that he posted the screenshot of me playing with cheaters on a site that wasn't owned by either PizzaBot or TacoBot. Which 
Is that supposed to clear you of anything? The site he's referring to is called MVM Lobby, which provides data on tour progress and leaderboard rankings for all public profiles. And it is absolutely true that he did make this image public within the comments section on my profile. But, uh... MVM Lobby isn't Twitter. It's not like every single comment is placed front and center on some kind of lolcal bulletin board. It's a niche website inhabited by a niche group of hardcore MVM players, and judging by Basil's profile, he's well aware of the types of people that like to hang around there. Furthermore, I ended up getting bum-rushed by former, adjacent, and then current TacoBot members within 30 minutes of the PizzaBot mission wrapping up. It got so out of control that one of their members actually apologized on behalf of their spurgery. The only way this could possibly happen without Basil's intervention is if a player related to TacoBot decided to check my MVM lobby comments conveniently right after the encounter, oblivious to the fact that I had just played with their nemesis group. The right people checking on the right profile at exactly the right time while having no knowledge of the situation from a third party seems to be a bit far-fetched, doesn't it? Well, that's because it's a fucking lie. While I was chipping away at editing this video, I found something really damning. If we go back to Basil's document, we can see that he claims to have posted the link on a third party website. Nothing else. However, if we go back to the original Reddit post on the Wayback Machine, there's an entire section that was purposefully omitted from the document claiming, and I quote, I have also uploaded the screenshot on an MVM Discord server. That server is not occupied by just TacoBot members. Some left TacoBot long ago, some were not even in TacoBot to begin with, and some just dislike cheaters. Not occupied by just TacoBot members, implying that there were some members of the organization in the Discord, and he was well aware of that. Question, why did Basil feel the need to remove this section from his Reddit post when comprising his new document? Well, I think we all know why. Because no matter what way you spin it, my point still stands. Basil did share this screenshot among TacoBot associates, deleted all admission of doing so, and tried to frame me as pulling the ol' everyone who I don't like is TacoBot card. Good try on the cover-up though. Hit up way back sometime, they might take that shit down for ya. Next he goes on to claim that I was forced to cut out a section of my video for quote, starting a witch hunt, and that my stated reasoning of calling Basil a no-no word wasn't true. I have no clue where Basil finds the arrogance to think he knows the reason for my video getting age-restricted better than I do. YouTube support will literally give you the reason why. If you were around for the first week of the video's upload, you might vaguely remember this clip where I endearingly refer to Basil as a continuous source of inspiration to me. As it turns out, YouTube really doesn't like that word, and you'll be met with the same action as if you were to drop an N-bomb. Regardless of of my views on this policy, it's YouTube's house, so I better take my shoes off. They were surprisingly lenient in removing the flag. All I had to do was cut out that 5 second clip and the video got reinstated. Here is literally the screenshot from the day that I got hit with the claim. Basil isn't just wrong, he's obviously wrong. On top of that, I wholeheartedly reject the idea that the video was a witch hunt at all. If calling out individual people or individual groups for their questionable behavior falls under that umbrella, then by that logic, I've started about a dozen witch hunts on this channel before. And surprise surprise, none of those videos are age restricted. He then went on to paste this screenshot of me originally stating that the video wasn't going to discuss the ongoing feud between TacoBot and PizzaBot. Now unlike many of his other statements, Basil doesn't take the liberty of drawing a goofy ass conclusion on this one. But if there wasn't a negative implication to be made, it wouldn't be in his document. Basil would also end up using this as the banner for his expose Twitter account. Evidently, he assumes that I was lying the whole time. But take a look at the date on that comment. February 22nd, 2022. Only five days after the PizzaBot encounter. Remember, this was in the very early stages of conceptualizing the video. Over two months before it had been completed. I originally viewed the swarming of my profile as petty drama that wasn't worth talking about. It was only after that experience where PizzaBot would detail their history with TacoBot to me. And that's when I learned that this rabbit hole 
hole went way deeper than I thought. It wasn't until I discovered PizzaBot's 200 page long manifesto against the numerous people that went after them that I decided to make it a focal point in the video. That's it. No hidden agenda, no grand conspiracy, I just learned more information and changed my mind. Next he claims that I took cheated loot from the PizzaBot missions, which by the way, is 100% correct. Remember, the original video started off as me just trying to test out whether or not cheated missions were on par with speedrunners. I said as much in part 2. The original video was supposed to be like a 10 minute analysis on how quickly cheated missions were completed, with maybe a couple of minutes of ethics discussion thrown in for good measure. The morality surrounding it was interesting and something I did want to talk about, but I was very much learning as I went. I didn't have a strong position one way or the other. It wasn't until I got all the footage I needed that I established the stance I have today, that the normalization of taking cheated loot will pose a threat to the longevity of MBM as a game mode. Since then, I've held true to that principle, and haven't knowingly taken any cheated loot. Which is why it shocked me to learn that, at the end of Basil's document, he accuses me of doing just that. I actually distinctly remember the game he's talking about, as it happened mere days after I read the doc in full. And shocker, Basil's leaving out key information once again. As you can see by the screenshot Basil provides, I joined their group on the last wave. Now, fair enough. There are two heavies on the team. Even when focusing down one giant robot, I should still be able to see their miniguns flick with inhuman precision at least a couple of times. Problem is, neither of those heavies were cheating. It was the scout. Like, come on, do you really think I'd ever be able to catch that? Why in a million years would I expect someone playing Scout on the last wave of decoy to be a cheater? People aimbot for efficiency purposes to get to the loot menu quicker. Scout, even with cheats, comes up short in that realm when compared to all the other classes. After we completed that mission, I ended up queuing for one of the Big Rock missions to finish up my tour, and I ran into the cheating scout player in that lobby as well, this time playing Sniper. Now notice, the only screenshot the cheater provides as proof of this is at the very beginning of the game, as you can undoubtedly tell by all of our scores being zero. I wonder why the cheater didn't take a late game screenshot. That's because it doesn't exist. I remember playing Wave 1 with them while the sniper was humping Big Rock's Big Rock, and once the game wrapped up, someone in chat said something along the lines of, Wheezy taking cheated loot? And as I was sitting in spawn, about to reply, a spinbot sniper ran through the doors. The moment that happened, I immediately left. So whoever gave Basil the information either didn't make him aware of those events, or Basil deliberately ignored them to paint me as a hypocrite. Either way, there was much more to the story than what's being presented. Ditto with his claim that I allowed MVM cheaters to stream gameplay in my Discord server. This was true for literally all of one day, or at least I thought it was. I knew attaching a Discord at the end of a video that riled up the MVM crazies on both sides would be a complete shitshow on day one. However, I specifically claimed on day one that it would be banned shortly after, and upon making that announcement, I didn't see any cheater streams for the following two weeks. In Basil's document, he claims that people were streaming countless times. If he's referring to day one, fair enough. I let the server devolve into a taco versus pizza bot gangbang for the lulls until I started pumping the brakes to make it an actually pleasant environment. From there, even though I didn't make it a hard and fast rule from the beginning, the message had seemingly been made loud and clear to where no one wanted to tread those waters. The funny thing is that Basil has screenshots for over half of the accusations that he makes. Yet, for a problem that's apparently been a recurring issue, he doesn't have a single one. I'm not claiming he's lying, or even that he's wrong, but if cheating was going on after day one, I didn't notice it. Two weeks later, once I had been notified that it started back up again, I immediately made a firm announcement that anyone streaming cheating from there on out would be banned. Before the document's creation, Basil had claimed on Reddit, 
Quote, if Wheezy is against cheating as he said, why is he letting these cheaters play with the people on his server? Obviously, he's trying to put another point on the graph of me being a closeted cheater supporter. A narrative that's always been objectively incorrect, and I believe my body of work proves as much. Just to wrap things up, let's take one last look at his expose Twitter, where we can see even more delusion at play. First, he claimed that I was impersonating and insulting him, and used this screenshot as a alleged proof. These messages aren't from me. They were sent by the dude who I got to do the reenacted footage. Granted, I think this is really cringe, but no, this isn't me. And shock of the week, just like being an associate of TacoBot members, Basil lied about this one too. If we go back to Basil's Reddit post, he states, quote, Wheezy's friend started to make fun of me while sending these messages to one of my friends while being impersonated as me. I love the Wayback Machine. It's a beautiful thing. He then goes a step further to claim that I purposefully made an alt account to reply to my own tweets in a manic tone. I don't even think that this one warrants a response either, but just to quelch any doubt whatsoever, here is a screenshot I posted in the Chucklenuts Discord server just minutes after this happened. Again, this isn't me. There are probably even more logical discrepancies or outright lies that Basil has told, but I think I've made my point. This video should serve to permanently write off Basil as a dishonest actor who no one should be taking seriously. So no matter what happens from here, whether he writes up a new hit piece or keeps Jehovah's Witnessing around the Twitter blocks with a chewed up scroll covered in red pen, at the end of the day, no one will be dumb enough to believe him. And with that goal attained, let's talk about the baller shit we'll be doing with the revenue. In the description below is my newly created Steam group. Go down there and join it right now. Because from December 20th to December 25th, we're going to be giving away every single Australian in the game. Yep every single one. All you have to do is head over to this pinned thread under the discussions tab, leave exactly one comment below the post, and you'll be entered for all 19 weapons over the coming days. Don't worry if you're watching this after the 20th, you can still comment below and be eligible for all of the upcoming days that haven't happened yet. And that's not all, because last weekend, TF Connect ran a massive charity stream for special effects a charity designed to help bring the world of gaming to people with disabilities. And I figured, fuck it, may as well match every dollar we spent on the Australians and help them out as well. Their campaign is still running, so I'll have a link in the description below if you feel like making a dono yourself. Of course, there are a lot of moving parts that make doing stuff like this possible. I am but one man in a banana suit. So I just want to give my thanks to all of you for putting me into this amazing position I'm in today. And also shoutouts to War Thunder for sponsoring the video. Link in the description to get you started there. But most of all, thank you, Basil. Thank you for letting me clear my rep, donate to charity, do a thousand dollar community giveaway, and pay my rent, all from the easiest slam dunk video I've ever had the pleasure of making. I really, really appreciate it. Now go get therapy, this shit isn't normal.